Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Self the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this and that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. A stock take is like a report card. It may be painful, but it's always profitable to do so. As the year draws to an end, companies all over the world are counting their gains and mourning their losses. Individuals are not left out of this rat race. It's the hope of every investor, after a long year of financial activity, taking risk and venturing to deep waters, that they seek to enjoy their dividends at the end of the year. They say it's a spice that adds taste to the merriment of the Yuletide. One would think that the Nigerian government, like every right-thinking government, would also be counting their gains after a long year. For isn't that part of the reason for the, for the high and lofty budgeting and planning? Regrettably, any anticipation of a bountiful return on investment is far from reality, as an expedition through the events of 2019, both politically, financially, or otherwise, rather reveals an abysmal performance. This leads me to the twist of my advocacy today. From the very first straw, being the 2019 general elections, we invested in an evidently flawed electoral process, leading to the re-election, or should I call it, appointment of the incumbent president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A major general, as he's now being called, is perhaps our well-deserved return on investment. If our health systems are still heavily plagued with grossly inadequate and ineffective medical equipment and facilities, minimal regard for health professionals, a threat to import medical practitioners from the abroad, while our homegrown practitioners are left to export themselves to a place to find acceptance and greener pastures, then I think our government has failed woefully by investing absolutely zero value on human life, hence the higher turnover of debt rates at, that could have been easily avoided as our return on investment. The annual returns of an invested corrupt judicial system sees the hollow temple of justice swirling in full circle in favor of political shenanigans, masquerading as Democrats, first evident in the removal of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, and then to the last straw, invading a court in session to rearrest a common man who had been granted bail, thus displaying an utter disregard of the rule of law. One wonders how honorable this court really is. The fact remains that the challenges we face as a nation are innumerable, and as we mourn over the losses of this year, let us also not our hope for the coming year. The taxpayers are ready in solidarity to continue, in, to continue investment in our nation, and while we advocate and wait for the government to turn a new leaf and map out their positive New Year revolutions, our voices will not be silenced. Neither will our collective will for a better Nigeria be stifled. Death penalty or not? Hmm. Let me say that, um, yes, 2019 has been a difficult year. Um, if you look at all the indices and, and, and you've pretty much drawn everything out from the rule of law, the election cycle, health, um, Rose, education, education. Um, everything. Too it's um, employment, you know, um, foreign direct investment. It's, it's been poor. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's really a challenge of leadership. And we talked about this um, during uh, before the we, we started this, that it is a, we need leadership that you know is ready to make the sacrifices. Um, we talked about it because I think that the foundations on top of which we build this Nigerian system 
it's, it was not designed for, for you know, um, how should I put it, growth. You know, we have spots of what we tend to be, but this, the way the system comes and brings us back. Um, so it, it's a challenge. Um, and you know, look, for me, and, I, and I've talked about this on the show before, it, it appears that all we know how to do in this country and we know how to do well is to fight for power. So if you look at we are in 2019, we just finished an election in March. We're already talking about 2023. 2023. And the political actors are all scheming about who to be president, who to kick out, who to start. I mean, no one's talking about health. No one's talking about education. Um, no one is talking about, the way you know. Forward, yeah, so there's, there's a race for, for, how should I put it? I don't want to use the word. I'm on television. Um, <laughs> but there's a, there's, a, there's a race for going backwards rather than going forward. Um, and it's, it's, it's scary because I, you know, I, when you look at you have young kids, um, there, there's no sight of hope. Not even, there's no sight of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need to be building because we, we need to say, um, unfortunately, you know, the way politics works is that is every four years, not annually. So it's uh, the way we've operated uh, um, that, and we need to say, in four years, are we going to see progress in health, in education, in, in, in elections, in security? Um, are we go I don't see it. I don't see it. Don't and, see and, it. and that's what's more frightening. No and that's, yeah, and that's what we should look at recently in National Assembly, 37 billion to renovate. Yes. So th th that appears to be priority? Yes. I, I think, I think um, 2019 has been... Um, year of stock taking and doing some sort of reset and it's a challenge for us there are myriads of problems that we can continue to see it you know till the end of the year but it, it poses a challenge to us so what do we want in 2020 i would you know suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable how? We can, How? from your local government uh, representatives right down to your governor, whoever. Because 2020, the government will ask for a lot from you. VAT is going up, taxes would be enforced. Now, if they're doing this, it, it, it now uh, it's, it's imperative that you demand for service. You demand for all of the social uh, uh, services, amenities, amenities we're mm -hmm. talking about. So it's a reset, it's a challenge for us. So mm. What do we want to do? I mean, I, also I'm looking at, I like the fact that you're using the expression return on investment because that brings you back to a business, yeah. you say, mode. And that's part of what I feel is seriously lacking. And that, that's when he's saying, what do we do? My mind is still struggling with how do you communicate? Because I feel that to a large extent, the people at the leadership have been blinded by the money factor and the power for power's sake. So they're not reasoning in a very rational way because we've said this on The Advocate before that the thing they want, if they would only just, it's like a farmer, put the seed in the ground, it, there'll be enough for everybody. But eating the seed is, is just like <laughs> yours, just squandering even your own fortunes down the line. So it's so short-sighted. It's like, it's, it's a kind of madness. It's a mania. That's really, so when you look at it, it's like, how do you get these people to see that if we invest when there is surplus, even you oh, will be you laughing to the exactly. bank. Why are you consuming? Are you happy to keep consuming? And then the very basis or foundation on which you hope to reap, you're destroying its future. So I just feel that there's something fundamentally wrong with the psyche of the leadership. Or is it that when they get in there, they're mesmerized by all the money and the power? Or is it that they start off being like that? And so I'm thinking, OK, how do we make it so that, yes, in addition to getting people to hold their leaders accountable, we begin to put systems in place that force us to operate like a business you know, model where you know, you, your systemic systems are put in place that are automated, that you know, take out the human factor as much as possible and build in accountability every step of the way. So. Well, I, 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 you see, the thing is, it will take time anyway, even if we're ready to change. <laughs> change takes time. So it's, it's going to be a bit difficult. But... Um, um, I, I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted mm. um, and everybody preparing to go into the system 
uh, is going into that system mm. and actually accepts that system. A few people don't. Mm. So it's going to be a very difficult task to get out of that mode. Right. Um, it will be a slow and steady thing. I think that what has happened, I'll tell you the thing, some of the things uh, Buhari is doing, actually, funny enough, uh, it's almost as if, what, much as I don't think he's doing much to improve the country, really, but I think he's doing some things that when he leaves will tighten certain areas like what? Give us that some. people will <laughs> want to... Uh, even your tax that you're talking about, he's tightening it. That's mm. good. Mm. He would, but they would chop the tax. Mm. Or I'm just speaking like a true Nigerian <laughs> now. But let's hope, let's even get more tax, right? Okay. So he's doing a lot of these things. So that by the time he goes... I agree, I agree with you in that. that you, I, he's doing some things uh, like that. Uh, what Saidu is saying, yes. um, I see the connection there, mm. that citizens should get more involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the more this tax system comes yes. up, yes. I yes. think he's going to push the citizenry to, yes. to demand yeah. more because <laughs> now yes, a lot more of... Because yeah. we, it, we've been a rentier economy where you take money, but now the taxes, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. Well, the, the plight of Nigerians is so many. We can begin to recount all of the challenges and problems we face. But I had hoped that we would focus on evaluating our role in nation building as much as that of government, for we're all in it together. After the break, Saidu does a more focused type of projection.